All right, this is going to be a quick overview of section 7.5 in case anybody needs to review or maybe you were absent. So this is the last section in unit three. Um, as you can see on the screen, there's some parabolas. We learned how to graph quadratic functions. So the first thing to notice, um, here's what's sometimes called vertex form of a quadratic function. So f of x equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. So some things to remember, the x minus h, the h is going to be a horizontal shift. Minus takes us to the right, plus takes us to the left. So that's something we went over in our first unit um, that's going to come back and help us determine where the parabola is when we graph it. So again, x minus h takes us to the right, x plus h takes us to the left. That plus k, that's going to be a vertical shift. So it's going to shift the parabola up and down. So plus would go up, minus would go down. So if your equation is in this form, your vertex is hk. So take the opposite sign from what's in the parentheses for h, um, again, based on the right and left shift, and then k is the y coordinate of your vertex. The a at the front of the function, if it's positive, your graph opens up, kind of like this. Uh, example on the left side, that U shape. And then if A is negative, that's when your graph is sort of upside down. It's been reflected over the X axis. Okay. Um, another vocabulary term to know is axis of symmetry. So that's this vertical line that sort of cuts through half or cuts the parabola in half. So it's a line of symmetry. It's vertical. It goes through the X axis. It's always X equals H. And again, it's a line of symmetry, the graph is symmetrical on either side of the axis. I'm going to scroll down. Here's the first example that we saw. So we had f of x equals x minus 5 squared minus 9. So in that example, because of the minus 5, we're shifting 5 to the right. Shifting that 5 right. Because of the minus 9, we're going 9 down. So that's why our vertex ends up being positive 5, negative 9. Okay, so you can see that type there. I'm just going to highlight it as well. There it is, that lowest point. So because this graph opens up, we would say it has a minimum, whereas if it was upside down looking, it would have a maximum. So you're never going to have both the parabolas. It's either one or the other. What else? The axis of symmetry, sketch that here, make it this sort of dashed line, going straight through the vertex. Hard to do it on a computer here. Um, so yeah, it's a vertical line that goes straight through the vertex, and it goes through the x-axis. In this case, it goes through f5. So we would say the axis of symmetry has the equation x equals 5. See the minimum value here. We mentioned that already. Um, the parabola opens up, so it has the lowest point. Minimum value would be negative 9. That's directly connected to the y-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, and that brings us to this table here. So if you're... Uh, trying to make a full graph and not just plot the vertex, we need to know what other numbers to plug in. So I suggest making a table that has at least three to five points. I actually made seven points here. In the middle of your table, put the vertex. So in our case, it was five, negative nine. All the other x values should be close to five. So that's why I sort of counted down, four, three, two. Then I counted up, six, seven, eight. So knowing where your vertex is will sort of center your graph and give you some good values to plug in for x. So you're not just randomly picking numbers. Like you might say, oh, I'll, I'll pick zero. Zero is easy. But if you plugged in zero in this function, it would give us a number, but it's going to be pretty big, actually. And we're not going to be able to actually graph it on, uh, on this graph. So anyway, uh, center your vertex in the table and then uh, choose some x values near the vertex to plug in. So I'll just do a couple examples here. So for example, plugging in 6, just type that out, f of 6. That would be 6 minus 5 squared minus 9. So 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 squared is 1. And 1 minus 9 would be negative 8. So that means another point on the graph would be 6, negative 8. Let me just go find that. Here's 6, here's negative 8. All right, and you could keep doing that to add more and more points on our graph. Um, another thing to notice is there should be symmetry in the table as well as on the graph. So all these points around the vertex should sort of match up with each other. 
Um, so since I just got six negative eight, sort of one to the right of the vertex, I should also get the same y value one to the left of the vertex. So if I were to plug in four, I would also get negative eight. So anyway, you can just plug in and notice it on your own, or if you start to remember this about symmetry, you, you can plug in less and just sort of use symmetry to fill in the other half of the so, Okay, I'm not gonna spend time plugging in every single number, just know that you could, and if you plugged in more and more points, you would connect them and get this parabola sheet. Okay, so that was a graph that was already made for us. On the next page, we got to make one on our own. Okay, so this is example one. All right, so find the vertex, axis of symmetry, and maximum or minimum value, and we have f of x equals x plus 5 squared minus 2. Okay, so notice the x plus 5, that means we're going to change the sign. Remember that plus 5 means we're shifting to the left, so if we're going 5 to the left, our vertex actually starts at negative 5, so the x-coordinate, the minus 2 means we're going down 2, so our vertex would be negative 5, negative 2. The axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line going through the vertex. It's going to be x equals the same value in that vertex, that first coordinate, x equals negative 5. Okay, hopefully you can read that a little bit over here. Now, this function doesn't have a negative sign in front of it, which means it's not going to be upside down. It's just going to be that kind of usual parabola shape opening up, which means as it goes up forever, it's going to have a minimum. The minimum value is that y coordinate of the vertex. So that would be negative two. So notice how we're able to answer all this stuff without even having a graph yet. Okay, but we still need to make the graph. So what we can do is at least plot the vertex, negative five, negative two, plotting that down here on the graph. And now we need some more points. So if you wanna now sketch the axis of symmetry, I'm gonna do a little dashed line again. with my vertical line trying to make it straight, not really. Um, so it's a vertical line going through the vertex. Notice that it's crossing the x-axis at negative five, same x value as the vertex. Having that axis of symmetry will help with plotting our points. Notice the table here. We can start filling in some other values for x, again, centered around the vertex. So this time, since our vertex is negative five, negative two, let's pick other values near negative five. So I'm gonna do negative six, negative seven, negative eight, then we can do negative four, negative three, negative two. And you could keep going as many points as you want, but I would say at least five is good. This is seven. Okay, and now it's a matter of plugging in. So um, just to save some time, I'm not gonna do every single point here, but we certainly could. Uh, I'll start by doing x of negative. So that would be negative six plus five squared minus two. So what's that gonna be? Negative one squared, which is one minus two would be negative one. So negative six, negative one would be one of the points on the graph. So plot that, negative six, negative one, which means again, we'd have that symmetry in the table. So we could also plot negative four and negative one. All right, so you can see there's just three points at the bottom of the parabola, that's not really enough. Um, so we should have at least five points. So I'm gonna skip over the next two and just do negative eight and negative two. So we'll do F of negative eight. So that's negative eight plus five squared minus two. Negative eight plus five would be negative three squared would be nine, so nine minus two should be seven. Okay. So that's what I'm seeing. I just found f of negative eight is seven, which means f of negative two would also be seven. Again, I'm sort of using symmetry to get those extra points. Negative eight, seven here, negative two, seven. And you can fill in the other points in between. All right, so yeah, my graph's a little wobbly here. Keeping them out, not the best. Really not the best, but hopefully by hand you're getting a little bit better. <laughs> so you have that general U shape of your graph. You have the vertex, the minimum, we got the axis of symmetry, um, we're good from there. So let's see, 
there's one other graph we learned how to do, and this one required a different formula uh, because the equation's in a different format. So let's go to one more page. Clear, clear my writing. Okay. So this is the last page of the notes for this section. Sometimes the equations of quadratic functions are not in that very helpful vertex form. Sometimes they're in more of a standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So in that case, there's this new formula that we need. So if your equation looks like a trinomial, so that a, b, c form, we need to use negative b over 2a to find the vertex. So now it's a totally different approach. We can't really easily see transformations in this, um, in this situation. So for this function, g of x equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. I can see the negative, so I at least know the graph is sort of upside down, but I can't really tell the, the shifting horizontally or vertically. It's not really in that nice form with parentheses that we saw before. So I don't know the vertex. We're going to have to figure it out. So let's identify a, b, and c. a is negative 1 in front of the x squared. b is 4, and c is 5. Okay, so if we plug in negative b, that would be negative 4, over 2a, so over 2 times negative 1. Okay, and then we can simplify that fraction. Negative 4 over negative 2 would be positive 2. So that's the first coordinate of our vertex, 2. Now, to find the y coordinate, we need to plug in. So see how this is definitely more work. We're now finding f of 2. So I'm going to plug 2 in for x. All right, I'm going to type it rather than write it. Okay, so let's see, negative 2. <laughs> uh, okay, negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 5. Now, notice we're not squaring the negative sign, okay? So it's 2 squared, but make it negative. So negative 2 squared would be negative 4 plus 8 plus 5, 4 plus 5, which is 9. So the next half or the second half of our vertex, the y coordinate, would be 9. So our vertex, the full answer there is 2, 9. Okay, and I'm going to go plot that right now on the graph, 2, 9 right here. Okay, so axis of symmetry, draw it if you want or not. You don't have to draw it. It's just good to know that it's there. That would be that vertical line. It would be going straight up and down through the x-axis, going through the vertex, and in this case, passing through the x-axis at 2. So our axis of symmetry would be x equals 2. Since this graph is opening down, because that leading coefficient is negative, this opening down, it goes down forever. It doesn't have a minimum, but it does have a maximum, sort of that top of the sort of like rainbow shape. So this graph, because it opens down, has a maximum. The maximum value is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So if you look at the point we just plotted, the highest point of the graph is right there. That y-coordinate is going to be the maximum value. So the maximum value is 9. Again, that's the y coordinate of the vertex. Now we can start filling in our table. I'm going to put the vertex in the middle, 2, 9. And then we can start picking some other numbers to plug in for x. So, same strategy as before, centering around the vertex. So, I'm going to pick some values close to 2. So, how about 1, 0, negative 1. And then we'll go the other way, some values close to 2 on the other side. So, on the right of 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and then we can carefully plug those into the function and get our uh, get some other points on our graph. Okay, so I'll just do a couple. So f of 1 would be negative 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 5. Negative 1 squared, remember, we're not squaring the negative. 1 squared is 1, so that first term would be negative 1 plus 4 plus 5, that's going to be 8. So another point on our graph would be 1 8. And then we also have 3 8. Again, using that symmetry, we got 1 8 there, 3 8. All right, if I plug in 0, I'm just going to speed ahead a little bit here. <laughs> I did this ahead of time. Uh, if you plug in 0 for x, maybe you can already see the first two terms just become 0. So actually getting the y-intercept when they do that. So it would be 0, 5. Also, going to get 
four, five. Okay, so you can already start to see that kind of upside down parabola shape. If you plug in negative one, you actually get zero. If you plug in five, you get zero. So you can try that on your own, just verify that that's true. Okay, and if at any time your graph starts to look super wacky and zigzag, probably there's a sign error that we made. We know what a parabola looks like, so you kind of have an expectation of what the shape should be. All right, and now we just carefully connect. Try to make it a curve, not too pointy. I'm connecting my point. There we go. So there's our parabola. So that's an example where it's opening down rather than up. And again, that's because it's starting with that negative. So yeah, there you go. So that's 7.5. Um, we know how to find the vertex if your equation's in that vertex form, paying attention to horizontal shifts and vertical shifts. If your equation's not in vertex form, if it's in that trinomial form, like we're just looking at here, if you can identify A, B, and C, then the formula we would use is negative B over 2A. So in this example, we found that that was 2. Then we plugged in, we plugged 2 into the function and got 9. Putting those together, that was our vertex. Well, you know how to reach me if you have any questions. Um, yeah, just let me know. Thank you.